time for Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse on NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast is brought to you by Bennett Evans Used Cars, Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert audio repair specialist, Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Now let's go to the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee for the action with NCW Life Channel Sports Director Eric Granstrom. Welcome to the Apple Bowl here in Wenatchee for today's lacrosse matchup between the Wenatchee Valley Thunder and the Issaquah Eagles. I'm Eric Granstrom, joined by Rod Higley. Well, Rod, since last time we uh, had you on the air, the uh, that double overtime thriller yeah. against Richland, the team went on the road and had some struggles on the west side last weekend. Well, you know, they played pretty well. They lost both games by two. Uh, they played Bothell Friday night. They led the game, gave up the lead, and ended up losing by two goals. Uh, and then they played Mount Sy, and they, again, they were ahead at halftime. Uh, Mount Sy went ahead by four goals, and Wenatchee closed it you know, within two, but uh, they couldn't get it done. Um, but they are missing a few players, too. Yeah, let's talk about that. With spring break this week, mm -hmm. uh, there's actually a couple of uh, key players that are out. Well, Cole Hansen, that's, yeah. that's a big one on defense. Uh, Sage Crider's back today, but he was gone last weekend. And then they've had a couple injuries, too. Uh, you know, Easton Hudson had a concussion in that Richland game. And he tried to play last week, and within a couple of plays, he was not feeling well, so he went out. And, uh, you know, that defense was the difference last weekend. Uh, this is a tough test for him today, though. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, Mr. Tilly. Uh, okay, yeah. From it sounds like yeah. looking on paper anyway, he was on uh, fire. He had a great game both nights. Yeah. Uh, he had four goals against Bothell, and he came back and had three the next night. And uh, just really playing well. Uh, I think of all the guys right now, he's playing with a lot of confidence. He's getting great shots, and everybody's looking for him too. You get a little trouble when you start watching one guy and letting him take the shots. But uh, so today, I think you know they've got to just everybody needs to say, hey, I'm going to do what Tilly's doing and just try and get some get some shots off. Well, when Anche Valley picked up a couple of wins in a jamboree, so kind of a short format on the season, they're three and three overall. You got a team coming in that's eight and two, and uh, kind of a powerhouse as far as the state is concerned, aren't they? You know, Issaquah's been good. Uh, one of the top teams in the state for probably the past 10 years. Uh, you know, their, their record's good. They lost to Woodenville this week, but uh, I, I'd have to say that they're one of the best teams uh, on, the, on the east side of the mountains, and uh, it's going to be a tough task for Wenatchee today. We'll see how they measure up. Well, we'll talk to the coach about this matchup as we continue here with the pregame show from the Apple Bowl. It's the Wenatchee Valley Thunder and the Issaquah Eagles coming your way next on the NCW Life Channel. Our pregame show continues here prior to the matchup between the Thunder and the Eagles. And now talking with the head coach of Wenatchee Valley, Brandon Parker. Well, Brandon, last time we had you here was a double overtime game against Richland. You said beforehand you had no idea how that was going to turn out. I'm sure that probably wasn't in your mind, double overtime. Yeah, absolutely not. That was uh, the best game so far, so I hope the viewers enjoyed that one. A yeah. double overtime game in lacrosse is extremely fun to watch. It, it, we just unfortunately were on the losing side of that game, but um, great game. I That team uh, came second in the state in Division Two last year. They beat us last year 15-2, to two, so we had a rematch with them this year, and we took them to double overtime, so that was very impressive for our team. You had uh, injury in that game uh, that uh, I guess you lost a player for a couple of the games last weekend, or did he try to go? Or Well, we, we lost him for the next game. He had a concussion, was uh -huh. cleared, came back, and then in the game last weekend, he got hit pretty hard again. Oh. So we've taken him out again. He's not going to play today either, okay. but we'll be back next week. Okay. So. Okay. And we were missing a couple of other players for uh, spring break related okay. family trips. Sure. But, um, that's fine. We have a game plan for today. We're focused. Uh, this is another very good team yeah. in the state of Washington. They're one of the top teams in the Division I category 4A school. So um, we're going to bring everything we, we can, and I anticipate a, a good game. Let's, let's talk about the learning curve. Uh, you know, you have that double overtime heartbreaker here at home, and then you hit the road to the west side last weekend against Bothell and Mount Si, and you have two really tight games just air, narrowly edged on both of those. What are, what are the kids learning through this process as you get ready to play this team here today? Well, that's a good question. Um, they, the way I do this is generally every play, every opportunity, we look at that as are we going to win that, that you know, defensive set? Are we going to win that offensive set? If they score, 
wipe the slate clean, we start over again, and we're going to win the next one. At the end of the game, you know, hopefully we have this, you know, more points than the other team does. These teams we've been playing last weekend are top teams in the state as well. And we have, in the past, when Anchi's played uh, teams from, from Spokane, uh, from down near Richland, and the competition has been, been pretty good, but we've been fairly dominating. So this year we've stepped it up and we've decided to schedule games like today and some of the ones in Seattle to, uh, to teach these guys, you know, this is the level of competition where we need to be. Sure. And they've both those games, I mean, we had the lead with two minutes left, and, and we just unfortunately lost by a goal or two. They they are learning that you know they can compete at the highest level in this in this yeah. state and if they you know just a little bit more effort here or a little more focus there they can they can earn these wins so it, it's instead of just playing a team that you might beat by ten or fifteen goals these close games against good teams are, are teaching these guys it's bringing our team closer together and we're we're teaching them that you know you're right there and just a little more work put into it and we can um, we can hopefully win some of these games. Well, best of luck here today against a very tough team, and uh, let's most importantly keep everybody healthy. Absolutely. I, I, I hope we uh, hope we come out with a win today, and I hope uh, people enjoy watching the, the lacrosse on uh, on your channel. I, I appreciate you guys. Thank Absolutely. you. Brandon Parker joining us here on the pregame show. We'll come back and get you ready for the lineups and the faceoff here from the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee. It's lacrosse coming up next on the NCW Life channel. Welcome to the Apple Bowl here in Wenatchee. I'm Eric Granstrom along with Rod Higley as we get ready for Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse here on the NCW Life Channel. And today, Wenatchee Valley plays host to Issaquah. The Issaquah Eagles come to town with a record of 8-2. and two. Wenatchee Valley 3-3 three and three overall. They're 2-1 and one in league. The last time we had Wenatchee Valley here, of course, was that double overtime game, Rod, against the Richland Bombers. Unfortunately, it went the way of the visitors, but man, what is, was that a great game? That one could have gone either way. And, uh, you know, less that penalty at the end of the game, I think uh, Wenatchee might have dug that one out. But what a great what a great game here at the Apple Bowl. Appreciate you joining us here on the broadcast today as I deal with a little gum on my fingers. The uh, starters out there getting the instructions from our officials, Brian Walker and Dave Timmons, uh, a couple of uh, gentlemen we had out here officiating a couple of weeks ago. In fact, I think each game we've had uh, so far here at the Apple Bowl that we broadcast anyway have uh, been officiated by these two gentlemen. So we've got the Wenatchee Valley Thunder in the gray and black. The uh, visitors kind of have the Panther colors out there in the purple yep. and gold as we get ready for lacrosse here on the NCW Light Channel. Rod, let's talk about since that uh, that uh, game here at home, the double overtime loss to Richland. They were on the road last weekend, Mount Si and Bothell, yeah. I think it was. And tough games, but they came out a little short on the road. You know, uh, Wenatchee played real well. Uh, they were down three defenders in both of those games, um, which hurt a lot. Uh, they led both of those games at halftime and then gave up the leads and kind of battled back and ended up losing both by two, two goals. So they were in both of them. They played, uh, you know, some good teams. Uh, but Issaquah is going to be a tough task today, I think. Yeah, Issaquah Eagles, uh, looking at their website, they've uh, won the state championship, uh, what, two or three times, I think, in their history. So... They uh, definitely uh, a powerful squad. And talking with uh, Coach Brandon Parker before the ball game here today, uh, he said, you know, we need to see these tougher opponents. Right. We need to see what we need to size up against yeah. across the state. You know, definitely. It gives the kids confidence knowing that they can play against these guys. And, uh, in, you know, it would be huge today if they could uh, get off to a good start and uh, build that confidence during the game. So Gage Gunter will be out there for Issaquah. He is a freshman and a midi for the Eagles, and he will be in the face-off against the Wenatchee Valley's uh, Nathan McCarthy. So McCarthy and Gunter is our face-off here as we have uh, sunshine, breezy conditions on this spring day here in the Wenatchee Valley. Thanks for joining us on the NCW Live Channel. For lacrosse is the Thunder take on the Eagles. The official is ready, and the whistle sounds, and the dig is on, and McCarthy comes up with the face-off, and Wenatchee Valley will get it into the offensive zone first, and a quick shot nice. and a goal right away for the man who has had the hot stick as of late, Connor Tilly. How many goals did he score last week on the road? He scored seven goals, three on Friday and four on Saturday. He's got the hottest hand out there right now. You can tell he's just confident. Uh, he was looking for that shot, and it's great to get that early goal. So the first goal of the game comes just, uh, what, uh, 11 seconds into it as uh, Wenatchee Valley scores first here. And again, Connor Tilly, 
the man who got the feed from Nathan McCarthy. And 11.49, the mark here of that first goal. one nothing. Wadachi Valley on top over Issaquah. Boy, you're playing a tough team like that. You want to get off to a good start? That's a, that's a way to do it. No question about it. No question about it. Let's see if they can keep, keep control of the ball here on the faceoff. So here we go with another faceoff again. And the uh, two combatants out there, still the same. Gunter, number nine for Issaquah. And Nathan McCarthy for Wenatchee Valley. And McCarthy again comes up. Well, he had it for a sec and then lost it. Let's see who's going to come That's up with it Jax here. Tucker almost had it. Tucker dip, uh, diving for it, and he gets it, and then dr falls down as he whips it across over to Dahlbeck. So Mason Dahlbeck running away from the pressure defense here applied by Issaquah. He'll flick it across to Sage Kreider. Kreider lost the handle. It's loose, and then backing up on the play, and then stumbling around. Let's see who's going to get it. It is McCarthy, and then he'll just backhand it. flip it uh, down in the zone. And coming up with it, the uh, goalie for Issaquah, Daniel Davis. A pretty ugly sequence right there. So Issaquah in their own end, trying to uh, get away from a little pressure defense applied here by Wenatchee Valley. Get it up on the far sideline across the way to Sam Foster. Foster runs past the midpoint stripe and then gets it into the zone here. He'll uh, get it down in the corner to Thomas Senbeg. Uh, Sandbag across behind the goal, and this is where Wenatchee Valley you got to keep an eye on that ball and make sure you keep track of those that might be scooting across in front of the goal crease. Trey Detola had it for a moment, and now they'll work it around the horn again and then come back behind the Wenatchee Valley goal. With it on the run is Griffin Fish. Fish feeds out top. We got a whistle, and the official I think wants to look at the headgear possibly. Uh, maybe you didn't have his mouth guard in. You've got to, you, you don't have to, you have to wear your mouth guard in your mouth. You can't just have it on your helmet. Okay. That may have been a, head, and uh, a violation there. So, so that's a turnover, and Wenatchee Valley will have it here. So it's the ball in the uh, stick of 82. That's Nathan McCarthy. McCarthy gets it across the big point. Connor's strike open. And flips it to Tilly. Tilly a little bit wide on the shot, but it will be Wenatchee Valley maintaining possession. Boy, a good transition again for yeah. Wenatchee Valley. Yeah. When Anchi Valley works it around, boy, I should have brought some Windex to clean this window up here. <laughs> it's a That's little Kyle, bit dirty. Kyle Schmaltz with the ball. Schmaltz with it. He'll yep. uh, bring it outside to Ben Higley. You know that kid. Yeah, he's mine. <laughs> you claim him, do you? Yeah. Cole Loomis now with it. Loomis across into the uh, awaiting stick of Robbie Jorgensen. Roby Jorgensen. i got to get that right again. Jorgensen. Been a little quiet here the last few games, has Roby, since that uh, double overtime game against Richland. You know, he had a goal or two in the other games, uh, but yeah, he's he, he'll be right back on it, I'm sure. The flip across on the pass attempt to Tilly, it is a ground ball, and let's see who's going to come up with it here. Wenatchee Valley chasing after it, and uh, they're going to say it is out to Issaquah. Mm -hmm. One thing to mention, too, is we're not using the regulation size field here, even though it's available to them. The officials don't like how how close the sideline is to the grandstands. They say you have to have six yards, and then with the concrete next to the stands here, he uh, he thinks it's dangerous, and so he's not going to let them play on the full field. Daniel Davis will uh, cycle it back outside. Now coming up near sideline is Keegan Galbraith. Galbraith will get it into the zone here and then uh, pass it down into Griffin, uh, Griffin Fish. Fish back behind the Wenatchee Valley goal will give it up to Thomas Sandbeg. Uh, junior on the attack here for Issaquah. Wenatchee Valley on top, one nothing as we're just underway here. First quarter at the Apple Bowl this afternoon in this non-league tilt between the uh, Eagles of Issaquah and the Thunder of Wenatchee Valley. Back behind the goal is Cam Huta. You can tell already it helps to have their full uh, defensive line out there. It makes a difference when you've got three guys that are used to playing together. Here's an attack. Watch out. It is Kyle Weiser on the attack. He'll swing it back behind the goal, looking for somebody to cut across. He'll flick it back outside. Here's a shot going to be taken. It's wide on the shot and miss by Trey Detola. And the ball goes past the end line. It will be out to Issaquah. That's the first shot for them today, right? It is. Thomas Sandbeg uh -oh. flicks it out front and a nice knee stop, but the ball in front ah. and it goes. It's scooped into the net for a goal by Kyle Weisler. Weisler with the rebound as it hit the knee. I think the original shot was taken by Trey Detola outside. And a good stop by Wenatchee Valley's Kyle Robertson, but the ball kicked out in front of the goal crease and just an easy scoop on the goal for Issaquah. 
You know, that's good awareness uh, from the def- or the uh, you know offensive players for Issaquah looking for that ball and getting that rebound because uh, you know you got you can't just let it roll around out there. Somebody's got to jump on it. Came with eight sixteen to go here in the first quarter, and so we're all tied at one. Who did I say got that goal again? That was Weiser twenty one. Okay. Weiser twenty one. So Weiser with the goal for Issaquah. Kyle with it. And now the faceoff out at the midfield stripe. And this time it's won by Wenatchee Valley's Jake Reiner, who's out there. That's, a, that's all three faceoffs won by Wenatchee. Reiner got bumped here near side. And again, that's got to be tough for him when you're used to practicing with mm-hmm. the full regulation 60 yards wide. And now you're limited to the football field width here at the Apple Bowl today. You know, both teams have to adjust to it, though, and uh, they've got to start using more of the middle of the field rather than the edges. John Batura with it now for Issaquah, gets it into the zone, passes down low on the right side to Griffin Fish. Fish works it back behind the goal crease, picked up there back there by the defense of Wenatchee Valley. I think that's Noah Kim back there playing yep. defense. As they'll flick it back outside, the Gage Gunter going to reset the offense here. Gunter comes near side with it down to Cam Huta, and then back outside to Gunner. Cross it out across the front, and let's see, they get bodies in motion. Nice Here move. comes the attack by Gunter. Gunter with the shot, but a little shot, bit good wide. Save. And when Anchi Valley comes up with a stop, as Kyle Robertson will bring it out into the uh, Jax Tucker. Tucker gets it to Tilly. Tilly back outside to Dahlbeck. Wenatchee Valley resetting here offensively, getting some bodies back in the game as Jorgensen comes back in. Higley with it down in the corner. He got hit and then lost the handle. Trying to get it back. He can't get it back. And the ball loose still back there. Past the uh, goal crease on the right side of the corner. Higley came up with it again. Then he's he's pushed down. That's tough. Got to take care of the ball. But when Anchi got it back there, I think that's a clean hit out of bounds. Oh, Oh, got a flag. So we'll see what the official says. You got a push on on McCarthy there, it looks like. So McCarthy going to have to come sit out for a minute or two on the penalty. So when Anchi Valley will play a man down, that's too bad. Looked like they were going to get the turnover there. Yeah, you know, I think Nate, because he's so big and strong, sometimes they throw the flag just because the guy, you know, gets knocked so hard. But uh, it looked clean to me, maybe a little bit in the back. Trey Detala has it now for the Issaquah Eagles. He'll flick it across over to Gunter as they work in tight here as Wenatchee Valley kind of sags in front of the goal crease trying to keep Issaquah out of the scoring zone here. Outside it is to Huta. Huta down low on the right side to Alabadi. That's interception by and Jack Tucker. nice job by Tucker to step in front and use that long stick and come up with the interception. Sage was on the spot there, but they don't get the clear. Oh, Kreider had it, lost Myers it, but then Jack it. Myers picks it up. On the run, back the other way, trying in transition. A good job by Issaquah to get back as Holbrook got back there to pester him. He'll fling it across the ball loose here, but it looks like Wenatchee Valley is going to come up with it as Gray Coldy had it. Coldy will feed it back outside to Wilkins. Cutter feeds to Nathan McCarthy. McCarthy with a shot and the goal for Wenatchee Valley. That's huge. Came off the uh, out of the penalty box. Must have just been a 30-second penalty, and he was back out there and uh, got the goal. That's awesome. 5.49 mark here in the first quarter as Wenatchee Valley retakes the lead on the goal by Nathan McCarthy. Yeah, that's a, that's a good shot for Nathan there. And uh, it's nice to see Wenatchee working uh, man down and then uh, taking advantage of the yeah, guy coming out of the penalty absolutely. box. Absolutely. McCarthy, by the way, that's his eighth goal of the season for Wenatchee Valley. Nathan averaging four points a game for the Thunder. You've got Jake uh, Reiner back out there at the X for the faceoff. So 2-1 Wenatchee Valley on top with 5.49 to go here in the first quarter of play. Gorgeous afternoon as it's turned out. The clouds look kind of ugly right before the game. But a, yeah, it looked like rain, but uh, it's holding off. Showers moved outside of us, and the banana belt took effect here. For the first time, Issaquah wins the faceoff, and then Gunter quickly runs it up into the zone as they go right side with it, and then back behind the goal as Huta comes up with it. Huta back outside into the uh, clutch there of Wilsey. Wilsey back out top. Here's the attack by Detola. Detola got pestered, lost the handle, but now gets it back. He'll turn, spin, come across, and then flick it back outside to Weisler. Weisler with the one goal here for Issaquah as they trail it 2-1 to, to Wenatchee Valley. 
they're not doing anything, you know, out of the ordinary here. They're just working the ball around and taking some dives. But, uh, you know, they, so far they haven't uh, really been doing anything unusual that Matchy hasn't seen before. Weisler now cuts in. Nice job by the defense there to converge on him as they get it outside. Watch shot. out. Here's a shot in close and a goal going to be scored by Trey Detola. That ties it up at 2-2. Yeah, that's, when you get in that close, open like that, pretty tough for Kyle to stop that shot. Well, it's kind of like they just lulled him to sleep a little bit by working that ball around and around yeah. and around, and suddenly you got a guy just uh, standing there uncovered. Right. Well, and that's the idea, I guess, going back behind the goal like that. Right. Is you get the, the focus, the attention back away from what's happening maybe in front of the crease. Every, everybody's watching the ball, and, uh, and somebody's guy just slips in the open. We're in the first quarter with 4.49 to go in, uh, well, pretty quick scoring game so far. Two apiece, and McCarthy wins the uh, faceoff here for Wenatchee Valley. But triple team got no help, lost the ball. Now it's loose. McCarthy comes and collides with the man trying to get after the ball. We've got a whistle, and it's going to be Wenatchee Valley ball. A loose ball push there on the purple, and uh, Wenatchee maintains possession. Roby Jorgensen comes in. So, too, does Cole Loomis here on the attack for Wenatchee Valley. Back behind the goal crease, spinning with the ball is Tilly. Tilly in close with the shot, and it, it looks like it's in goal. I was worried he was in the crease there, but, uh, it, <laughs> hey, it counts three to two. Connor Tilly with the goal. That is his eighth goal of the season for Wenatchee Valley. Second one today. That's great. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. That would make it nine goals on the season. And, uh, boy, it is uh, fast and furious here. Eight seconds between Issaquah's goal and Wenatchee Valley's goal to take the lead three to two. You know, you like to see a fast game for Wenatchee, you know. I mean, uh, we've got a lot of guys with speed, and, uh, and especially with down defenders, uh, it'll make a big difference. So here's the faceoff again. Reiner out there for Wenatchee Valley, and it's Gunter for Issaquah. As time winds down here in this first quarter of play, very entertaining quarter. Kind of has a, a little bit of a reminder of that yeah. Richland game. Yeah. That went double overtime here a couple of weekends ago. Oh. Reiner had it but didn't see that he flicked it out of there. And coming up with it for Issaquah was Holbrook. And the long stick will uh, come up the far sideline over there. And then they'll work it back out top from Detola. And then it comes over to Gunter and we get a whistle away from the action. And it looks like it's going to be a turnover, and Wenatchee Valley will come up with the ball. I think he said he didn't get into the uh, into the offensive box there. In time? Yeah, so I think that's what he ruled. Okay, him. so turnover as Wenatchee Valley had it. Reiner uh, passes over to the right side to Tilly. Tilly back to Reiner over here near side on the hash mark to McCarthy. He'll collect it back again, have the defense come and slap him around. McCarthy, big fellow though, and then he'll flick in front and a nice turnaround shot attempt close by Reiner, but not quite. That was a good look and a good shot. And then backed up, so Wenatchee keeps the ball. Love the aggression that Wenatchee's mm, showing yeah, here definitely. in this early part of this game. Why not? They'll get it in on the uh, start of play and a tough shot there that, by McCarthy. The ball loose out in front, still being dug for. Right, Cole, Wenatchee Valley it. comes up with it. Coldy with a shot. It was partially knocked away and will touch Wenatchee Valley last. will be out to the Thunder. No, well, they called that it was out of bounds before he got to it. So uh, that's Wenatchee ball still. Okay. So Tilly with it. Now back behind the goal it goes, then comes out near side as Schmaltz had it. Back to Tilly. Tilly, he'll bring it out top to Reiner. Reiner cross over to McCarthy. McCarthy looking down low. Had the uh, Coldy. Coldy got bumped, lost it. Coldy trying to get it back. He almost had it. Still loose on the ground. Now finally picked up by Issaquah as Gunter comes up with it. And look out. He's on the run now yeah. on the attack up the far side. And he will get it into the box. Gunter with only three other guys to help out. So he'll back it away and wait for some help offensively. Nice job by Wenatchee Valley to get back yes, defensively definitely. on that exchange. Definitely. So Gunter now will reset the offense with the ball between the hash marks at that 30-yard line here at the football field. Actually, they got it back behind the goal. Sorry, I lost it there for a minute. Now it's back out top. Look out. Opportunity here on the attack. The shot goes wide, and it will be out to Issaquah on the shot right in front by Trey Detola from about 12 yards out. He's, uh, he's got two hands there. He goes both left and right, so he's, he's a guy to keep an eye on today. Bringing the uh, ball into play back behind the goal was Huta. He'll bring it back outside. 
And with it now is Weisler. Weisler cuts right back left with the shot bouncing up, and it will go off the inline and again be out to Issaquah. Again, for those new to lacrosse, there's a scramble that happens on a goal attempt. When you shoot at the goal, if the ball goes out of bounds and you're the closest to it, then you're, that's the team that gets the possession. That's right. The, the body that gets to the line first gets the ball back. Near side, it comes to Sandbeg. Sandbeg out top. It goes to Detola, who had the last goal for Issaquah. 3-2 contest, minute 42 to go in the first quarter of play. Now again on the drive is Gunta. Gunta falling down, though. Lost the handle, and we get a whistle called. Yeah, and they're going to call down. a flag on Wenatchee Valley. I think Reiner's going to be uh, penalized here. I didn't see the penalty. Nope. It's, um, see what they call here. It's on Loomis. Okay. One trip. minute for tripping. Boy, I didn't see a trip there. I thought he fell down on his own. But yeah. <laughs> so the ball will be in the uh, stick here near side of Huta, number 32. He'll start to play. Huta comes back to the hash mark. Look out. They had a crease there yep. for a minute. Sure but, looked like it. Boy, I'm surprised he didn't take that shot. Weisler with it, looking for a hole. Then back out top, it comes to Gunter again. Gunter collects it back, spinning. Nice job by the defense to come out on him. As Jack Myers came out there. That's good patience by Issaquah looking for a good shot here. Now the shot and the goal from the left side by Thomas Sandbeg. Yeah, that was good work, uh, I've got to say, on the man up there by, uh, by Issaquah. You know, they passed up a couple of looks and then got their really good one down low. Thomas Sandbeg with his first goal of the game, and that ties it up at three here with a minute 10 to go in the first quarter. We've got a good one. So Sandberg... And Sandbeg. Sandbeg, yeah. S A N B E G. McCarthy will be out there for the faceoff. It'll be a different player for Issaquah this time around, as Sam Foster will take the Issaquah faceoff for the Eagles. So far, Wenatchee's done well on the faceoffs, and that uh, you know, it helps a lot when you can control that ball on the face. So the whistle blows, and the body's in motion, and Issaquah had it. Looks like they will maintain possession here. That's where we miss Easton Hudson having a long stick midi to go out there and get those, uh, get those balls. Back behind the goal crease, uh, Griffin Fish with it. He'll pass it over in the corner to Sandbag, who just had that goal. Sandbag will bring it way out top to Detola. Detola, as the time winds down here, 42 seconds left in the quarter, all tied at three. You don't want to give up one here no. right before the end of the quarter. Again, Fish on the move here, right side down in the corner in the box. He'll uh, swing it across, and boy, nice job by the defense there. Is how many has it? They're setting up, I think, here. Back to Gunter with 24 seconds. Gunter between the hash marks. Left side, then Gunter collects it back again. Defense comes out on him. Ooh, he had a shot there, didn't take it. Oh, and now yeah. stolen away. Nice job by Wenatchee Valley. That's Stepping Sage in Crider. was Kreider. Sage Crider, and That's now a push. a push from behind as the quarter comes close to an end here with five seconds to go. As the outlet pass went to Garrison Coley, and coming up to push him from behind looked like Detrola. Which uh, is big in two ways. You'd like to see that guy sitting down for one thing, and uh, also Wenatchee goes man up to start the second quarter. Are they going to give it to Detola or are they going to give it to somebody else? It is Detola that will uh, get the penalty here for the push. They stop the clock with 5.6 seconds, all tied at three. Wenatchee Valley's Roby Jorgensen will bring it in here with four, with three, with two, with one. They'll just hang on to it. And that'll be the end of the first quarter here at the Apple Bowl. We'll take a 60-second break and come back. You're watching Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse. We are all tied between Wenatchee Valley and Issaquah at 3. We're back after this timeout on the NCW Life Channel. Welcome back once again here to the Apple Bowl between the Wenatchee Valley Thunder and Issaquah Eagles all tied at three. Our broadcast today brought to you by Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Take a walk on the wild side. Also Leonard Evans Used Car Superstore where the name means a great deal. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert auto repair specialist and Confluence Health. Welcome aboard Confluence Health as our new sponsor. Safe, high quality care with compassion. Confluence Health 
Thank you very much for supporting our broadcast. Well, Rod Higley, we uh, didn't know what we were going to get no. with this one. We knew Issaquah was really good. We knew Wenatchee Valley has been, you know, battling and battling, and mm -hmm. here we have a 3-3 tie. You know, I think you couldn't ask for a better start for Wenatchee, getting that first quick goal, uh, getting some confidence, knowing they can play with these guys, and uh, now we've got a good ball game. 11 seconds in, Connor Tilly got the first tally for Wenatchee Valley, making it one nothing. Kyle Weisler then followed for Issaquah about three minutes later, three and a half minutes later, to tie it up at one. And it's just been that way, back and forth and back and forth. Nathan McCarthy with a goal for Wenatchee Valley. Trey Detola with a goal for Issaquah. Connor Tilly with a second goal for Wenatchee Valley at 421 left in the first. And then Thomas Sandbag with the final goal here to tie it up at 3-3. You know, Wenatchee's doing great on the faceoffs. Uh, they're playing really good defense fence and uh, they're getting the ball cleared out of their end so you know they're doing what they need to be doing to be in this game dave timmons had a little exchange there with the uh, coach for issaquah brandon fortier uh in that quarter break and he was looking at one of the heads on the sticks to make sure it uh, measured out correctly is that what you, uh, saw? you know i'm not sure if that's what they were arguing about or not the, the refs always take a look at a couple of sticks during the breaks mm -hmm. but i think maybe the coach was had an issue with the call oh, okay. that he had made uh you know a push like that, it, um, push with possession. Yeah, I mean, it, it went both ways. Right. You know, McCarthy took one like that too. So I don't know. Right. I don't know if that's what he's arguing about or not. But he took some offense for the ref. So Wenatchee Valley on the attack here, a man up to start this second quarter of play in a three-three game. Tilly will bring it outside on the corner, then out top to Reiner. It comes Reiner back down low to Coldy, Coldy to Tilly, Tilly to Coldy, Coldy looking at the approach now. Tilly. Angle's not so good. The ball nearly knocked away, yep. and it is knocked away. Is Nathan McCarthy after yep. it? Still loose on the f on the field. Ground ball here. McCarthy had it, then lost it. We got a scrum, and now it's Issaquah coming up with it. And I think I heard a whistle. Yeah, they're going to say unfair advantage. I think on a push to try to gain access to the ball by Issaquah. I think he's waving him off now. I'm not sure what he's doing. No, well, we got too many men on the field. Is two officials are not agreeing here. Meanwhile, the penalty being served by Trey Detola, who's been active all over the place for Issaquah, he's still serving that penalty here on the near sideline. I think he's out of the box okay, now. And they, get, yeah, and they brought somebody, brought else, somebody in else in on the in. defensive end. So Reiner comes near side with it, down to Jorgensen, down behind the goal that goes to Tilly. Tilly thought he was going to work off a screen there. Nice defense by Issaquah by Temple. Uh, and then the pass be out better. top and then the ball loose at midfield. And what are they going to call here? Whistle. Jorgensen That's comes out and Wenatchee Valley uh, exchanges uh, bodies in the lineup as Sandbag had it. Now another whistle. Sandbag still with it up the far sideline to the right of Wenatchee Valley's goal. Sandbag behind the goal. It goes to Huta. Huta over on the left side, and then they'll bring it back out top. And here's a guy who's been busy as well, Gage Gunter, or Gunter. And then Hummony had it. Now they'll go down low again to Sandbag. Sandbag out top into the stick of Weisler. Weisler crosses over to Hummony. Jared Hummony on the drive. Nice feed. And the feed and a shot. And, boy, that's just a little too easy on the goal there that for Trey Detola. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it looks like uh, Issaquah had a little talking to in the quarter because they've come out a little more intensity right now, both on defense and, and look good on offense. 10-35 in the third, or second period is the goal here for Trey Detola, his second of the game, and that gives Issaquah their first lead of the contest by a score of 4-3. to three. Yeah, well, actually, better be careful here. Uh, they don't want to let this get out of hand, so I think, uh, you know, what they need to do is just kind of slow down a little bit and, uh, and get, get a good look at, the, at, the, at a goal. A little breeze blowing across the field here at the Apple Bowl today. Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast. Eric Grandstrom along with Rod Higley. And it's uh, Joel Reiner again collecting the faceoff for Wenatchee Valley. But then he had the stick knocked away from him. And picking it up, running the other way is Gunter. Gunter down in the corner it goes on the pass to Fish. Fish will come back behind the goal crease. Issaquah challenges the ball anytime he has it. Sandbag out top. It comes to Weisler. Weisler crosses over to Gunter. Gunter on the pass to the right side. It was Junta. Huta brings it back outside again to Gunter. Gunter near side. Weisler with it. As Issaquah again, they get real slow yeah. and methodical. They come back around, and then suddenly they got a guy wide open. They're stretching. They're running guys across the middle. It's a good motion offense. Back outside again to Hemony. 
How many down to Sandbag? Sandbag wants to go back behind the goal crease. Sandbag picked up back there defensively by Kreider. Got and a feed in front, and the ball loose, and Wenatchee Valley comes up with it. Nice job by Dahlbeck to come up with that loose ball. Dahlbeck feeds to the midfield stripe to Tilly. Tilly now brings it into the box. Wenatchee Valley on the attack here. It didn't have the numbers, though, as they get bodies in offensively. Now feed right in front of the goal. Look out, the scoop oh. shot, no good. But, oh, nice attempt, though. That was Wilkins. Uh, yeah, he had a good look there. Cutter Wilkins. Now the shot taken by Tilly. It bounces off on the deflection way outside to Loomis. Loomis crosses over to Jorgensen. Roby wants to run the offense now. Goes to Tilly on the left side around the 20-yard line. Tilly on the attack. Kicked out to uh, for, with the defense by Gunter. Kicks it out to Loomis. He'll collect it back around the 15, then go back behind the goal crease. Again, their goalie has been pretty good today. Dave, uh, Daniel Davis, ring number 44. Tilly out behind the net again. As Wenatchee Valley kind of stacks it out in front of the crease. Then he'll flick it outside into Loomis's uh, stick. Loomis feeds right, and the ball knocked away. And then, oh, nice job by the defense board there. Yeah. And and that, Holbrook Wenatchee, uh, needs to realize that they're going to be attacked when they have the ball like that. Yep. Yeah. Holbrook was the man who came up for Issaquah and knocked the ball away. Now they go right side. We've got a whistle, he stepped and out of he stepped out of bounds. Again, playing with the football width here today, it's 110 yards long. They're using that regulation as far as the length, but the, uh, they don't get their 10 yards, what? I think it's 10 yards less yeah. in width than they normally would. Five on each side, yeah. So it's Roby Jorgensen now for Wenatchee Valley after the turnover. As Issaquah stepped out of bounds, Tilly will feed back behind the goal crease here. And the ball knocked away. It's loose again. And there's that Holbrook again. Yeah. Come up with a great defensive play. He does a great job knocking those sticks. You know, he's got that, that cross right across the stick every time somebody got it in their hand. Foster comes with it near side, up across the midfield stripe, and then gets it into the zone. Now they can... Uh, back it away and start the offensive attack here to trade to Tola as we are uh, about midway through the second quarter. 7.35 to go in the quarter. 4-3 Issaquah on top looking for more right here. Weisler with it about the 30-yard line. will pass down low to Sandbag. Sandbag behind the goal crease. And again, watch out for this attack here as they just kind of really slowly go at it. Now we get a whistle. Ball on the field. Extra okay. ball on the field. So they're going to move that ball around. Back behind. You'll see those balls that are lined up there. That's just, just to keep continuation of the right. flow of the game when a ball goes past the end line. So kick it outside to Weisler. Weisler crosses over to Hummony. Jared Hummony down right side to Fish. Well, that fast f pace we had in the first quarter kind of slowing down quite a bit here in the second. Issaquah up by one. Here's the attack by Hummony. Hummony with a cross. Oh, it that, looked like good position there yes, for Issaquah, but when Anchi Valley up to the task. And they threw the ball out. Outlet pass, fumbled away, but then spinning on the far sideline with it some help. is Cole Loomis. Loomis gets away from the defense. Nice job by Loomis. So Cole coming across the field all the way across the midfield stripe. That was a good run by Cole. <laughs> It feeds it up to Andrew Car Coles, uh, Carlson. Carlson. Carlson will get it back behind the net over there to Schmaltz. Schmaltz over in the corner. They'll bring it back outside to Jorgensen. Roby will run the offense here. Go down the hash marks. Shot missed. It's picked up by Wenatchee Valley. Back behind the net by Ben Higley. Higley will feed outside. Schmaltz then out to Jorgensen. Got Nathan McCarthy out there. Let's see if we get a drive by the big fella. Six minutes left here in the second quarter. Down right side to Higley. Higley back behind the net to Tilly. Tilly looking for any gap in that defense. Now the shot, a little bit wide on the shot there by Schmaltz. And it'll go out to Wenatchee Valley. Good sequence there. They moved the ball around and got a pretty good look. Good to see the uh, aggressive nature of the offensive sets here for Wenatchee Valley. Tilly with it behind. Feeds outside to McCarthy yes. with the shot and the goal. Tilly. Nathan McCarthy. Good feed by Tilly. And Nathan, when he's open, gets his arms clear, he can just rip that ball. There's a lot of velocity on that. Very tough to stop. I'd like to get a radar gun on that. Oh, he's got to be up 90, <laughs> I'd say. 533 left here in the second quarter as Wenatchee Valley ties it. 4-4. Four, four.
Good crowd of Thunder fans here today, thundering on those aluminum bleachers across the way. Trying to find a little bit of sunshine over there. <laughs> with the goal for Nathan McCarthy. So Nathan with two, Tilly with two. And that's, uh, that's, that's it. Let's see some other guys get involved here, huh? All tied up with 5.33. Here's the faceoff. Reiner working out there against Gunter. Gunter wins this one. Gunter will quickly get it up into the offensive set. Had the ball knocked away, and it's still loose on the, on the floor out there as the ground ball finally picked up when Edge Valley had it and lost it. Then it's who's Reiner. got it this time? Reiner, Reiner had it. Had it, and he lost it. Yeah. Who's going to get it? Finally, Issaquah comes up with it as it's sandbag timeout. and a timeout going to be taken by the Eagles. We'll take a 60-second break as well and come back here on our broadcast. The entertaining first half between the Thunder and the Eagles all tied at four. We're back after this 60-second timeout. Thanks for joining us for Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse here today on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Grandstrom along with Rod Higley. Our broadcast brought to you in part by AC Checker Taxi Cab, Neil's Boots and Shoes, and Quick Lube and Tune. You can probably hear the wind gusting in our microphones a little bit here today on this uh, spring day here on the Wenatchee Valley. That's uh, Wenatchee in the springtime. You're going to have wind, and Absolutely. if you get sun, that's a bonus, right? Yeah, you look up on those hills, you see the snow up there. Once the snow uh, finally uh, wisps away, then we'll get uh, less of this wind. So it's Issaquah on the attack here. Let's see. Aliyah nice Body had it back behind the goal. Well, now she's played good defense today, and uh, they need to make a nice stop here. Flick across over to Fish. Fish back behind the goal crease. Spying on him, Kyle Robertson, the goaler for Wenatchee Valley. Sandbeg has it. He's got a goal in this one for Issaquah. Then back again to Fish. Back to Sandbeg. Out top, here's the shot and a goal. Jared Hummony with his first goal of the game. You know, that's good patience. They just uh, <laughs> take their time, find the open guy, and, and, uh, and they're not afraid to shoot, you know, when they do get an open shot. Shot. Well, it's it's pretty obvious their their attack here is is they like to be behind the net to set it up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Wenatchee Valley looks like they mostly set it up from out front. Issaquah seems that they set things up back behind the goal crease. Yeah, you know, I, I think it, both are playing a very similar offense, but you're right. Uh, the set plays for Wenatchee, they do get that guy and they try and pull him out and then mm -hmm. make a dodge and get a shot and maybe a dump. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, Issaquah's done a good job in their offense. How many with the goal at the 427 mark here of the first half? And it's 5-4, Issaquah on top, and Nathan McCarthy, McCarthy wins that faceoff. And, again, triple teamed, and he's hit. And we're going to get a timeout taken. Boy, that was a good, timely timeout taken by Wenatchee Valley and uh, their head coach, Brandon Parker. We'll take another break here on the broadcast and come back. You're watching lacrosse here today on the NCW Life Channel. It is 5-4 Issaquah on top with 419 left in the half. We're back after this 60-second timeout. A good one on hand here today between Wenatchee Valley and Issaquah. 5-4 with 4.19 to go here in the first half of play. The Eagles on top. It will be Wenatchee Valley possession here to start it. And it looks like Nathan McCarthy out there near the 40-yard line between the hash marks will start, it off, start us off offensively for Wenatchee Valley. He'll pass it off to Higley. Higley to Tilly. Tilly back behind the goal crease. will uh, bring it back outside. Jorgensen lost it, then got it back. Roby feeds across over to McCarthy. McCarthy looking, looking. Double team comes out. He'll feed it to Higley. Higley off to Tilly. Tilly, again, back behind that goal crease, and there's a lot of purple jerseys around, so they'll bring it back outside. Now the look and the turn and the uh, pass and the shot by Tilly. It, nice deflection there. Yeah, quick shot. By Daniel Davis. Good block. Issaquah with the handle going up the far sideline and then they'll feed and then turn the ball over it's loose with a ground ball uh -oh. and look out it went back past everybody and then picked up back there by sandbag sandbag brings it back outside on the pass to detola detola is going to wait for some substitutions to uh, be taken care of here for both ball clubs 
as Weisler comes in for Issaquah. Also in is Hummony, who scored the last goal to put Issaquah up by a score of 5-4. to 3.15 to go. Again, here we go with them setting up the offensive attack back behind the goal crease. They'll bring it back out top across over to Hummony. Hummony right side down to Sandbag. And Wenatchee Valley just kind of holding position for the time being. They like to stretch it out and then open up the middle. Fish brings it back outside of the pass as they work it around the horn one more time. How many? Again, I wonder if they have a, a count. you got to go around the horn twice before you take a shot. Down low it goes, back behind the goal crease, and Sandbeg with it. Across it comes, near side to Fish. Fish outside again to Weisler. Definitely a patient team. Here comes Weisler on the attack. Gets a little help there. Bumps away. Pass. The dangerous one. Sandberg Beg comes up with it, though. Now outside to Detola. Watch him for him to shoot. Left side. Ooh, there was a hole there, but they didn't take advantage. Uh, Ali Abadi. Now, again, outside again. They'll work it. And let's see what they do this time around. As Detola on the shot oh. and the goal. Boy, tough angle. Yeah. From the right side, about seven yards away, Detola with the shot and the goal and now it's a 6-4 contest that's a good shot i mean he uh he's taken a lot of shots today or most of their shots today and, and he's got what three goals now so mm -hmm. uh, you know he's he's having a good game 207 left in the half and suddenly it's a 6-4 contest as issaquah kind of running things on the offensive sets you know, uh, there's plenty of time here for Wenatchee to, to get a goal. Uh, like last week, uh, they could get a couple here in two, the last two minutes of the game. And, um, you know, but what they don't want to do is uh, you give up a cheap one to Issaquah right now. You know, detola has got the three goals today. Looking at the stat sheet for them on the season, I don't even see him on the stat sheet. Really? Yeah. Maybe he's the kid that was hurt early on and just could came be. back. Could be. Now we've got a whistle. And a timeout going to be taken by Wenatchee Valley. So we'll take another timeout here on the broadcast, too. 2.02 to go here in the half. 6-4. I'll see what uh, Coach Parker has to uh, say. Maybe a little defensive scheme here to help things out for Wenatchee Valley. It's a 6-4 contest. Issaquah on top. We're back after this 60-second timeout. Back once again here to the Apple Bowl. 6-4 Issaquah on top with Anchi Valley after a timeout. Let's see what Coach Parker has drawn up here for Roby Jorgensen and company as the Thunder find themselves down by two. Tilly back behind the uh, goal crease here, pestered there by the defense of Shipley. And with Anchi Valley will bring it back around on the perimeter as Jorgensen has it with a minute 44 to go here in the first half. You think, Rod, they're going to work for a last shot here? It uh, looks like they're trying to get one right now. Roby's trying to uh, get clear on that, but uh, he's, he's covered up, so there's Ben open. And there's Ben with a shot and the goal. Nice feed across from Jorgensen to Ben Higley on the left side, and from about 17 yards out, fired down on the skip. And the goal, it's now 6-5. That's a big shot. You know, uh, he doesn't usually take those outside shots, so it's, it's, <laughs> that's a big one for Ben and for Wenatchee. Minute 31 left here in the half. Well, we saw that in the game here a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. where Richland had the lead, and then suddenly Wenatchee Valley went on a run and took the lead, or, th or at least it was tied, tied heading half into halftime. Yeah, yeah. Well, it could happen again. 6-5 the score. All comes down to the faceoff really helps to get that ball off these it's make and take you know so that would be up to nathan mccarthy the big fella out there on the faceoff for wenatchee valley and he, he got, it. got it flipped it up in the air and lost the handle let's see they're gonna say it's over to wenatchee valley i think the defender left the uh, box early I'm, oh, not okay. sure. I'm not sure what happened there but uh wenatchee has the ball wenatchee valley with a chance here with a minute 22 left in the first half tilly crosses over Near side to Hig Higley. Ben outside on the pass to Jorgensen. Jorgensen on the ground ball. Picked it up. Jorgensen on the drive. Cut off there by the defense. Feeds back to Tilly. Tilly nice. out front for the shot. And it was a good look that time yeah, Cole for Loomis. Cole Loomis. Just a little bit wide left. Got about a minute left. Minute one left on the clock. Here comes Wenatchee Valley again trying to tie this thing up before the half. 
Nathan McCarthy spins away for the defense, looking for some help. Feeds across. Tilly had it, and this is going to be a turnover for Wenatchee Valley. Yeah, that's too bad. They need to need to stiffen up here on the ride and try and uh, shut Issaquah down so they don't get a shot well, off. They've been bringing it up this sideline. You get a body over and try to knock him out of bounds here. 46 yeah. seconds left as Issaquah will bring it up here on the near sideline, and they're trying to push him out. That's Foster with it. Foster then cuts back across over by midfield. Higley, I think, stepped across the midfield stripe. Did he, or we're going to know? Timeout going to be taken here out. by Issaquah. He was right on the line, that's for sure. That was close. So 35 seconds left. We'll keep it right here and remind you that our broadcast is brought to you by Confluence Health. Safe, high-quality care with compassion. Confluence Health jumping on board to be our sponsor here. And uh, also, we don't want them. We don't want them. But if we do get an injury timeout, they're our sponsor of the injury timeout as well here on the broadcast. Also, our uh, broadcast today brought to you by Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert auto repair specialist. Leonard Evans Used Car Superstore, where the name means a great deal, and Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Take a walk on the wild side. Well, it's been a back-and-forth contest, yeah. Rod. It's a fun one to watch. You know, I, I think TV must help the lacrosse because we've seen two great games <laughs> now. So uh, the guys want to play. Our first uh, broadcast was a pretty uh, good win for Wenatchee Valley over Lewis and Clark. Uh, then the second broadcast was that double overtime thriller against Richland. Unfortunately, Wenatchee Valley coming up on the short side on that one, 10-9. to 9. And we've got another high-scoring one here, 6-5, as we have 35 seconds left in the first half. Issaquah has just used their final timeout to that first half. You know, it's interesting. This Issaquah team beat Richland 11-3. to 3. Yeah, it handled them. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, Wenatchee's looking good. I didn't want to bring that up with Coach Parker. Because sometimes, <laughs> I mean, you look at those and you go, well, yeah. if this, then that, yeah, exactly, right? Exactly, exactly. But uh, I, I did uh, share some emails back and forth with Coach Parker before the game today. And he did say, we are in tough today. He did admit that. So here we go, Issaquah with it with 27 seconds. This is where you don't want to give one up. As Issaquah on the offensive attack here. And look out, out to Gunter. Gunter out between the hash marks will collect it back outside the hash marks about the 35 yard line he'll start on the drive he's, cut across he's looking for 12 in the middle i think he'll flick it out top and then here comes the defense the shot a little bit wide taken by how many there with 4.5 seconds left they might get one more shot here waiting for the whistle to bring the ball into play with three with two with one i think that's going to be it for the end of this first half of play. But what an entertaining half back and forth contest. And Issaquah leads it by one at the half. And I think, I don't know if you have moral victories or not, but uh, if you're Wenatchee Valley, that's they, a darn good half. I think they've got to feel pretty good. Uh, you know, I think, you know, all these kids know what the score is. These guys are eight and two. They play on the other side of the mountains. So they knew it was a big game for them. And they're, they're rising to the occasion. I think they're playing well. 6-5, our score. We'll come back and get a rehash of this first half on the way after a two-minute timeout. You're watching Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse here on the NCW Life channel and online at ncwlife.com. We'll be back with more after this timeout. Again, our score here at half is Issaquah, 6 Wenatchee Valley 5. We'll be back after this two-minute timeout. Welcome back once again here to the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee on a gorgeous afternoon. We're looking back behind us here at Recreation Park. This is a busy place here this weekend. We've got the Triple Crown Baseball Tournament that's happening here. 115 teams are in the Wenatchee Valley uh, using facilities uh, from Leavenworth to Chelan all throughout the Wenatchee Valley. And uh, that's, I think we've got 14-year-old baseball happening behind us at Recreation Park right now. We've got the Wenatchee Valley Rams across the way here in Triangle Park that are practicing. They've got their first game of the season, I think, coming up in just a few weeks. It's always around Apple Blossom time that they play their first game. And, of course, lacrosse right here on the artificial surface at the Apple Bowl. So a busy place to be. Oh, you got to love it, you know. I mean, uh, that many baseball teams here in town, and they're getting uh, some decent weather. It is raining on the other side probably. Yes, so. yeah, and this is the, the Washington uh, Triple Crown season opener, so you do get a ton of teams that come from the west side that 
I haven't probably even had much chance to practice yet because of the rain showers over there. But uh, coming here and finding some sunshine, and that's why you come to the Wenatchee Valley, right? Well, Issaquah also here for a little sunshine today. And, well, the sun shone on them for a one-goal uh, advantage here as we head to halftime. Recapping that first half of play, it was a back-and-forth contest with the Wenatchee Valley scoring 11 seconds into it as Connor Tilly was able to find the back of the net for the first goal of the contest. And, Rod, you know, we talked about that, and I wanted to visit that again mm -hmm. about uh, being aggressive. You're playing a really good team. You yeah. know it's a really good team. You, the coach has probably said, this is a really good team we're yeah. playing today. Yeah. Come out and be aggressive. Why not? Yeah, no no question about it. And I think maybe Issaquah was uh, taken off guard a little bit. I mean, Wenatchee came down and scored right away, and they're like, hey, this isn't supposed to happen. We're supposed to be better than <laughs> yeah, these guys. right. So, uh, well, and sometimes you can get that where you think, ah, oh, we'll just toss our sticks out there and we'll win. Yeah, but that was a great play. Nathan took the face off, came down, and Connor was just standing there in front of the net. And yeah. he's got so much confidence right now. There was no question he was just going to turn and shoot. That was the first of a couple of goals for Tilly in that first half of play. Kyle Weisler was able to uh, even it up at 8.16 to go in the first on his first goal of the contest, and it was 1-1 at that point. Nathan McCarthy with the answer for Wenatchee Valley at the 5.49 mark of the first. That made it 2-1, but then back came the Issaquah Eagles again as Trey Detola. That's a name we called quite a bit in that first half, and we'll tell you more about that as we continue. Detola with his first of three goals in the first half, at 4.49, so just 10 seconds apart between the two goals, or one minute apart, I should say, and it was all tied again at two. But it was just, uh, what, uh, 28 seconds later, Connor Tilly found the net again on his second goal of the contest. That made it 3-2, to two, Wenatchee. But then Thomas Sandbeg with a goal at a minute 10 left of the first half, or first quarter, and it was all tied at three. Then it would be kind of flopping the tables a little bit as Issaquah would score first in the second on Troy Detola's second goal of the game at the 10.35 mark. Nathan McCarthy answered at 5.33, so that tied it up at four. Jared Hummony gave Issaquah a 5-4 lead with a goal at 4.27 to go in the first. Ben Higley then countered with his goal at a minute 31, excuse me, no, it was Trey Detola that scored again that put Issaquah on top for the first time on the day at uh, 207 mark. And then uh, Wenatchee Valley's Ben Higley scored with a minute 31 to go on a nice feed from Jorgensen across. And you, you were talking about it. Good to see him take those shots because he normally doesn't do that. Yeah, he, he usually he plays a little closer in than that. So it was nice for him to take an outside shot. And it was a big goal, uh, you know, brought, brought Wenatchee within one. You know, when you're talking there... Uh, it's amazing to think that Issaquah didn't have a lead in this game until very late in the first first yeah, half. Two yes. minutes left of the first half, and we'll see if Wenatchee Valley can continue to be aggressive as we get to the second half of play. We will take another two-minute break and come back and get you ready for second half action. Also get you up to date on what else is coming here as far as sports broadcasts are concerned on the NCW Life Channel. Again, we're at halftime here at the Apple Bowl on a gorgeous spring day. We appreciate you joining us here on the broadcast, whether you're watching online on the stream or if you're watching live on Channel 12 on Local Tell or Channel 19 on Charter, again, our score at halftime is Issaquah 6, Wenatchee Valley 5. We're back after this two-minute timeout. Welcome back once again here to the Apple Bowl in Wenatchee as the Wenatchee Valley Thunder play host to the Issaquah Eagles in Boys Lacrosse here on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Granstrom along with Rod Higley. Our broadcast today brought to you by Leonard Evans Used Car Superstore, where the name means a great deal. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert auto repair specialist. Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Take a walk on the wild side. And Confluence Health, safe, high-quality care with compassion. Well, the challenge here has gotten a little bigger. I yeah. mean, you've got Issaquah, a tough team already with a one-point advantage. Now, Wenatchee Valley is going to play down here to start the second half. What happened? Well, it's a tough penalty. Uh, you know, each break, the referees measure a stick and check them out, make sure that the balls roll out of the heads properly. And in this case, they found a stick that was deemed illegal. Ball didn't roll out immediately. And so that's a three-minute non-releasable penalty on Wenatchee. So they're going to be man down for the first three minutes of this half. And Issaquah had the ball at the end of the second half and, and as, it, as it ended in regulation, so they get possession to start with to begin with. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> even makes it worse. 
So the task at hand on the defense here for Wenatchee Valley as we get ready to start the second half. we got bodies uh, positioning here, the officials positioning, making sure the scorer's table is ready to go. And the whistle sounds, and here we go. Ready to start the second half with a man down for Wenatchee Valley. And uh, that is Ben Higley who had the stick that uh, evidently was not conforming to the restrictions that's rare. I have never seen Ben have an illegal stick before in the last uh, eight years. He's been playing lacrosse, so uh, maybe it's time to get him a new head. So three-minute penalty going to be served here for Wenatchee Valley. And as Rod mentioned, even if Issaquah scores a goal, usually that negates the rest of the penalty. Not the case here. Yeah, it's an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty, and so it's non-releasable. So Gunter with it for Issaquah as they work it on the perimeter. A little bit different approach here as they got a man up. And now the shot going to be, nope, a uh, pass to the right side. The uh, shot taken from the right side, a little bit uh, off the mark. And it will go out to Issaquah. Good to uh, scramble that back there by Sam Yunker, though, for Wenatchee Valley. I'm surprised they ruled out a shot. There's a nice block by uh, Kyle. Nice job by Wenatchee Valley's goaltender, Kyle Robertson. The ball loose behind the crease here. And we're going to get a whistle, and it's going to go out to Wenatchee Valley. Boy, that's huge. That's a big play. So one minute into the penalty, minute three into the penalty. So they've done so far so good. Just take care of the ball here. And they're going to need Kyle to help bring it out. Robertson off to McCarthy. Three bodies on McCarthy. Nathan comes up with a loose ball after losing it. Now he'll feed across to Tilly. They're a man down here. Tilly back behind the goal crease. Flicks it outside on the pass to Jorgensen. Roby Jorgensen will back it away from the defense. Stop and spin. Wouldn't that be something if Wenatchee Valley can get a goal here, a man down? I'm guessing they'll probably try and burn as much clock as they can, but they need to take care of it. He's in trouble now. Tilly back behind the uh, near the end line there. Lost the handle, and it's going to come out of bounds near side. And we'll go out to Issaquah. Minute 45 into the penalty of a three-minute penalty here being served by Wenatchee Valley. Quickly into the offensive zone is Datola. Datola right side to Huta. Huta picked up by the defense of Wenatchee Valley is Noah Kims out there helping on defense for the Thunder. Right side it comes to Weisler. Weisler had a goal in that first half. Out between the hash marks. Now left side oh, yeah. and the ball loose. Let's see, a kick and then a scramble for it. It's still loose. Wenatchee Valley comes up oh. with it and then lost it with a hack from behind That's and they're going to get a penalty. Or no. Loose ball push. That loose was great. Ball great push. Goldie had the ball, so I'm surprised that wasn't a penalty. So Tilly now will start it as bodies come in and out of the ball game. Tilly lost the handle for a minute. Now looking for the loose ball. He came up with it again. Good defense over there for... Issaquah by Galbraith Boy, they, down in the corner and the ball loose again. They do a great job on defense. Denying the pass there. The ball was loose. Now coming up the far sideline is Weisler. He'll come down towards midfield and get it into the zone quickly here for Issaquah with uh, 9.08. So just seven seconds left of the penalty here for Wenatchee Valley to kill it. And then they can come up even strength. Right side it comes to Huta. Now, Wenatchee Valley bringing an extra defender there in, and he came from behind and knocked the ball away from Huta. But the ball comes back up into Issaquah's hands as Weisler had it. Mason Dahlbeck getting released on the penalty there. Ben was serving the penalty, but Dahlbeck came in and knocked that ball out of the guy's That stick. was beautiful. Didn't even see him coming. So back behind the net, it will go to Huta as they'll uh, work that offense we saw so much where they kind of set it up back behind the goal crease. Look how far they play out here, you know. I mean, they, they really do stretch it out. Out by the 37-yard line as it is Weisler with it. Weisler on the attack, right side. He'll pass it off and then swimming around. And then Huta crosses. The ball knocked away and then uh, loose. McCarthy had it and picked up by Wenatchee Valley's Tucker. Jax Tucker brings it up into the attack zone. He'll go right side with it as uh, it came up into the stick of Coldy. Great Coldy back there. Wenatchee Valley down by one, back at even strength here. Nice job by the defense to, yes. to keep Issaquah really from even getting a shot. Feed outside. Lost the Careful side now. of it for a minute by Jorgensen, but they got it back. Got bumped heavily out there by Detola. Jorgensen to Tilly, oh. then back to Jorgensen. And here's the battle for the loose ball on the uh, ground. And it's picked up by Detola for Issaquah. 
And he gets bumped from behind. Detola goes down ugly on the play. He's uh, still down. And when Anchi Valley comes up with a loose ball, they say, go ahead and play it. Ah, pass outside. Look out. Jorgensen got hit from behind on the substitute. Getting rough and tumble here as Batura came in for Issaquah. Over to Tilly at the 30-yard line. Tilly will bring it back across the uh, hash marks here. For Wenatchee Valley, it's Cutter Wilkins. Had a golden opportunity in that first half and just barely missed. Outside it comes to Schmaltz. Schmaltz, they'll work it back around top of the horn here to Jorgensen. Jorgensen, right side with the shot. A little bit wide on the attempt. Where did the ball go? It did go out of bounds, so it's out to Wenatchee Valley. Got an interesting lineup out there for Wenatchee right now. 6.49 to go here as the whistle comes. Action underway. Jorgensen with it. Stops spinning. Double team on him. So they'll feed to Tilly. Tilly with the shot. Bounces in a little bit wide right on the shot. And it will be Wenatchee Valley ball. Greg Coley across to Schmaltz. Schmaltz outside to Tilly. Tilly brings it even further outside to Loomis. Cole spins away from the defense. Between the hash marks, sends a body in motion, stops right, looking for help. Now feeds down low. Even with the goal crease is Schmaltz. Schmaltz back behind now. He'll feed it off to Wilkins. Cutter out front. Nice. And right there for the shot is Tilly. Well, Another goal for Wenatchee. We're tied at six. Cutter Wilkins saw him there, and uh, Connor just had enough time to get control of the ball and put it in. Good play. So Connor Tilly with his third goal of the day for Wenatchee Valley comes with 6-11, and that showed a lot of patience. You know, it really did, and uh, the kind of a page out of the Issaquah playbook. Yeah, really. You know? it work really it around, was. work it around, and then get a good shot. Well, Wenatchee Valley certainly up to the task today against one of the best teams in the state, the Issaquah Eagles, as we're tied at 6 with 6-11 to go here in the third quarter. Got Reiner back out there in the faceoff. See if we can control one here. Clouds have kind of cloaked the sunshine here. It almost feels like we might get a few raindrops. I see some on the uh, shoulders of the hills outside of us here. We'll see if it comes our way. In the meantime, the face-off with Joel uh, Reiner out there. Not Joel. <laughs> That's his dad. That's his dad. He'd like to be out there. I'm sure he would. <laughs> I'm sure he would. But a uh, push here by Wenatchee Valley, and so they give the ball over to Issaquah. Again, it is Gunter, who has been active today. He's not hit the score column yet. Weisler now collects it. He'll go down low to Ali Abadi. Ali Abadi wearing number 10 back there. He'll give it up to Fish. Fish spinning from the defense. Had a gap there. But a nice job by the man with the long stick there for Wenatchee Valley, Sam Yunker, to cut him off. Yeah, Sam covering a much smaller player there. Here's an open opportunity, and it skips just wide right on the shot by Hummity. A little more fast, aggressive approach there by uh, the Issaquah Eagles. Now a fumble out near the 40-yard line. And nice. he came over across the midfield stripe trying to help out his teammate, did uh, Greg Shipley. I think that big logo screws people up a little <laughs> it bit. It does. So Wenatchee Valley with the ball in possession here after the turnover as they'll feed down low to Tilly. Tilly, no, lost Missed the handle it. of it, and it goes off the end line. On the pass attempt from uh, Garrison Coley. Moving forward, they, Wenatchee really needs to take care of the ball. Here you are tied in the middle of the third, uh, third period here, and it, you don't want any turnovers like that. Well, talking with uh, Brandon Parker before the game today, he talked about those two games on the road last week at Mount Si and Bothell. And he says, you know, similar type of game. We played them tight, played them close, even had the lead late in the contest, just about finishing. Mm -hmm. Well, here you mm -hmm. go with an opportunity. Still a long way to go on this one. As we're 4.55 left in the third quarter, but Wenatchee Valley up to the task here today so far. And they stay with it. Sandbeg with it about behind the goal here is uh, Issaquah on the attack. He'll feed outside to Gunter. Gunter near side to Hummity, who took a wicked shot just moments ago and missed. Hummity back behind the goal. And then they'll bring it back around. Watch for oh, the shot nice here. Move. Nice fake. And right into the awaiting stick of the goalie for Wenatchee Valley. Now the feed outside. Nice job by Robertson on the uh, stop at the goal for Wenatchee Valley. On the feed to Coley. Garrison stops between ah. these uh, ooh, dangerous pass we picked up by Tilly. I don't know if they've got a touch in the box yet, did they? Not yet. they got to get it in there. He may have got a touch over the 30. It uh, could minutes. be. Okay, yeah, so possibly. Tilly back to McCarthy. McCarthy down low, 
as uh, Issaquah was out of sorts there defensively. Jorgensen yeah. didn't take advantage, though. Now he'll back it away. Roby Jorgensen with it on the left side. And a shot, but way high on that shot. And it will go out to Wenatchee Valley with 3.54 to go here in the third. Good job defensively and offensively for Wenatchee Valley in this one. So we're back in play here. Feed outside. Oh, that was a golden opportunity. It goes awry with a turnover as it's Issaquah coming up with it. Hits now, Cliff McCarthy it. with a big defensive stop. McCarthy had it, lost it. Now looking forward to trying to get it back. He lost it again. Now it's picked up by Issaquah. And to the foreground, and then a swipe, and what are we going to call here? It's... I'm not sure what he called there. Okay. Jax Tucker came out, and yep. looked like, to me, it was a legal hit. Knocked the ball away, and the coaching staff from Wenatchee Valley wants an explanation on that one, too. And now we're going to get a the ball reversal. going back the other way. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but uh, they must have talked the ref into switching, changing his uh, mind. Well, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> You'd never see that. Uh, oh, and then a pass behind the goal, and it's going to be out and a ah. turnover for Wenatchee Valley. Oh, that's too bad. Got a little sloppy back there. Sage Crowder tried to feed it back to Kyle Robertson, the goalie, and it was a little wide. He couldn't get it. So now Issaquah with a chance, all tied at six with 3.14 to go. Let's see if they can take advantage of the turnover by the Thunder. Spinning away from the defense is Griffin Fish. Fish outside to Detola. Detola near side to Weisler. Weisler goes down low to Sandbag, then back behind the goal to Ali Abadi. Again, here they worked that perimeter, fumbled it around for a minute, did Detola, got it back. And then outside, he'll give it up to Weisler. They've done this a few times today where they just slow, 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 and then all of a sudden they have a cutter hanging on the on the back side of the goal. I guess the, the key there, if you're playing this man defense like what Anchi is, do not lose track of your man. Keep an eye on him at all times. And don't get caught just watching the ball. Outside to Hominy. Hominy jukes, shoots, scores. Good shot right on the ground and, uh, and tough for Kyle to stop that. Jared Hominy gets the seventh goal of the contest here for Issaquah as the Eagles regain the lead with 2.22 to go here in the third quarter. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You know, Wenatchee had a couple of possessions where they didn't take care of the ball, and the next thing you know, they're down one in this game. So a couple of opportunities gone awry for Wenatchee Valley. Meanwhile, Issaquah takes advantage. Jared Hummity with his second goal of the contest, second goal here of the, or his first goal of the second half, as we're now 7-6 uh, Issaquah advantage with 2.22 to go in the third as a helicopter rises from Central Washington Hospital nearby. The uh, ball flicked away and picked up by Issaquah as it was Holbrook that came up with it. He'll come up near side, get it into the box on the attack here. That kid plays well. He's got good stick skills, and uh, he's been around the action a lot today. Sandberg bag back there, cradling the ball back and forth, whips it across to Fish. Fish got the defender all uh -oh. over him, uh -oh. spun he's away open. from him. But a nice job of regrouping there by Tuck Tucker, Jax Tucker. Now we're going to get a flag down. Let's see what the call is here. Yeah, it, that's on Sam Yunker, I'm afraid. Oh, goodness. Minute 48 to go in the third. 7-6 our score. The official who threw the flag. They're going to say a 30-second penalty here against Wenatchee Valley and Sam Yunker. You know, he just had so much exercise on that kid. Well, yeah. I mean, just leaning forward. Yeah, I mean, he couldn't stop himself from falling into the guy. So <laughs> it is uh, Issaquah ball. Gunter has it between the hash marks. Well, Nancy's done a good job on man up today, so, or man down. So we'll see what happens. Well, man down here for another 25 seconds. Here comes the shot and the goal. Yes, I spoke too soon. Trey Detola with another tally here for Issaquah. And the Eagles back up by two. That's a tough one, you know. Um, here they were hanging tough in this game, and here we are short in the third quarter, and uh, they're up two again. Minute 34 on the clock with the goal by Detola, his fourth goal of the day. Yeah, he's had, a, he's had a good game. So Gunter will face off here for Issaquah against Reiner for Wenatchee Valley. Jake Reiner out there. 
The official puts the ball down, backs away, blows the whistle, and who's going to dig it out? Yep. Reiner had it, and then he got knocked down while he was trying to get after it. Surprised there was no whistle there. He Reiner came it. up with it still. Reiner being whacked on from behind by the defenders. Looking for some help here. He'll spin away from the defense and then feed down to Tilly. Tilly goes back behind the net. And then losing the handle of it back there for Wenatchee Valley was Cutter Wilkins. And what are we going to get? It's off to or over to Issaquah. Yeah, I thought there might have been a push in the back there, but uh, nope. Cutter was asking for it. Mm -hmm. Usually or rarely do you get the official to agree with you, <laughs> especially when you're a player. So up towards midfield it goes. As they get it quickly in, Galbraith had it with the long stick. They'll get it down back behind the goal crease again to Sandberg. Sandberg brings it back out here near side as they got it in the zone, and now they bring it way outside. As you were talking about, Rod, they really work it out top. Yeah, they do a good job, and they do a good job switching players in and out, uh, mixing things up on Wenatchee. Ali Abadi will feed it off to Sandbeg. Sandbeg back out top as they spread that defense out to Wisely. Wisely crosses over, then down it goes to Fish again. Fish. Spinning and turning against Sam Yunker over there. And then they'll back it out again and re-attempt with Gunter. Gunter near side to Weisler. Weisler off to Gunter. Gunter hasn't scored yet today. When Edge Valley needs a big stop here, trailing it by two. As time winds down in the third quarter, just five seconds left. Now Gunter with four. With three, here's the shot off the mark. And that'll be the final play of our third quarter on a shot taken. And Wenatchee Valley trails it by two. We'll take a 60-second break and come back, get you ready for the fourth quarter. It is Issaquah 8, Wenatchee Valley 6. You're watching lacrosse here today on the NCW Live Channel. We'll be right back. Welcome back once again here to the Apple Bowl as Issaquah outscored Wenatchee 2-1 to one in the third, and they lead a an 8-6 contest as we head to the uh, final frame here. Jared Hunnamy, uh, Hummony, that is, and Dre Detola tallying for Issaquah in the third. Connor Tilly with his third goal of the game for Wenatchee Valley. Uh, that came about the midway point of the period, and now Wenatchee Valley with their Tough task at hand uh, with uh, trailing on the scoreboard by two and a very tough Issaquah team. And we were watching the coaching staff for Issaquah. Yeah. They were rather animated in between the break. Yeah, the, the offensive coach uh, was really telling his guys something he wasn't very happy about. But uh, we'll see how they come out here. Uh, you know, when he was talking to them at halftime, they came out firing. You know, They so. did. They did. Well, they lead it by two here, 8-6. Appreciate you joining us on the NCW Life Channel along with Rod Higley. I'm Eric Grandstrom as it will be Nathan McCarthy out there on the faceoff for Wenatchee Valley as they'll travel from left to right as we look at it here at the Apple Bowl. And on the faceoff for Issaquah, it'll be Gage Gunter. And Wenatchee's done a pretty good job on these faceoffs so far today. I think they've won more than they lost, haven't definitely, they? Definitely, definitely, and they get another one there. There's Nathan McCarthy with the win on the faceoff, and then the ball whacked away from him, and as it's loose outside, McCarthy came or had it for a second, and That's then a push, a push nope. and we're going to get a whistle, and it will be Wenatchee Valley ball. That's fortunate. Uh, you know, Wenatchee's got to take care of the ball here in this fourth quarter if they've got a chance, have to have a chance to win. Tilly on the far side, back out top, it comes to McCarthy. McCarthy feeds right side to Jorgensen. He had a crease. Takes the shot, misses it to the right, and it will go out to Wenatchee Valley. You know, a decent look there. Mm -hmm. Cutter Wilkins will get it outside to Tilly. Tilly back outside to McCarthy. McCarthy crosses over to Loomis. Cole brings it near side to Jorgensen. Jorgensen with a juke and a drive. He'll spin away. Look, feet inside wide. Oh, Ooh, with the shot up close. Here's Tilly yes. again with the shot on the rebound, and it's good. That's Tilly cleaning up on that uh, on that miss, and uh, no one was on him. He's open, and he put it in the back of the net for his fourth goal of the day. It was uh, Coldy that took the initial shot. Yeah. And it was wide open, it looked like, for Greg Coldy. Yeah. Missed it, but right there was Connor Tilly for the putback. And with 11-18 to go, Wenatchee's within one. You know, you got to like that. Here we are going in the fourth, and, uh, and we get a quick goal. So Connor Tilly with four goals today. Trey Detola 
with four goals for Issaquah. Reiner will do the face-off duties this time around for Wenatchee Valley. They also have a different face-off man out there for Issaquah. I think it's Foster. And it is Reiner had it. Where did it go? Oh, it's still loose on the ground. Dahlbeck got then it. Then picked up by Mason Dahlbeck. Dahlbeck comes near side, spins away from the defense, feeds across to Reiner. Reiner looking left side, then backs away from the defense. He got it in the zone. you got to get it in the, where that 30-yard line is, and then you can back it out from there. But you have so much time. And it's up to the official, and it's kind of, is there is there a time? Or yeah, is it just? well, when you're clearing from one end to the other, uh, you've got 10 seconds to get it across the mid and then 20 seconds to get it into the box. Okay. So it's usually a 20-second time click off. So Greg Coley with it back behind the crease. Spins away from the defense. Feeds outside to Tilly. Had three guys come and barrel yeah. into him. A little too much traffic. Ball on loose still in there. And then finally picked up and cleaned away by the uh, goaltender, Daniel Davis. Davis will feed outside to Sam Foster. Foster pestered back there as he gets it up towards midfield. Gets it into the attack zone here. And then feeds right side over to Fish. Griffin Fish will go back behind the goal crease. And here comes Issaquah back as they... Exchange bodies into the contest. Wenatchee Valley also bringing some defensive help in as Hummony has it. He's got a couple of goals here today. Over across to Gunter. Gunter between the hash marks. Passes over down on the right side to Huta. Huta backs it away here as Sam Yunker came over. Boy, Sam's a big kid, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big kid. He's, he's not real thick, but he's big. Just presents a very large yeah. block. Yeah. I mean, visually, mm -hmm. uh, for someone even to see the goal. He's a senior. Jax Tucker, a freshman, is also a, a tall kid out there. Sage is the small one, and he's, he's quick. He's got those quick feet. Sandbeg will pass outside to Hemony. Hemony, a cross over to Gunter. Gunter kind of is their point man here on the offense when they bring it out top. As the kind of a give and go here. Mm -hmm. Now they'll uh, bring it back out. Cam Hutta will. And then left side over to Sandbag. Sandbag back behind the goal to Griffin Fish. 9-12 to go. Issaquah burning a lot of clock here as it is a one-goal contest, 8-7. Now here comes the attack by Gunter. Well, Gunter got past the defense with the shot. Missed it, though. And it will be touched last. Let's see. It's Lanche Valley ball. I don't know about that one. I, wow. I, thought, I thought Sam Yunker knocked that one out. But. I thought he did touch it as well, but... Uh, you hey, the take ref, him when you can get him. The ref can miss one now and again. <laughs> so uh, Sam will give it up to uh, Wenatchee Valley's Kyle Robertson. Robertson will bring it out and look to try to get it towards midfield. Really need a clear here. A lot of times running off. Robertson looking, looking, looking. Body still Somebody's moving Somebody's got to help him. Somebody's got to run it there up. There we go. Nathan McCarthy has it. Double team comes on McCarthy, but he gets right past it. Watch oh. out. Here comes the big fella. Nathan spins to his left, comes back right, feeds down low and to Schmaltz. Schmaltz back behind the net to Tilly. Tilly, left side. Here comes the body in as Cole Loomis will check into the contest for Wenatchee Valley. Now Jorgensen comes near side to McCarthy. McCarthy turning, pushing, then feeding down low to Tilly. Tilly back behind the net. That was almost knocked away. Yeah. It's loose back behind the goal here and still loose. And who's going to come up with it? Yeah. Wenatchee Valley after it now lost the stick. Did uh, Gray Coldy and it's out to Issaquah. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, the Issaquah goalie uh, got a stick on that ball and that, that started the whole progression there and Wenatchee turns it over. Eight minutes to go here in regulation. 8-7 our score. Wenatchee Valley trailing it by one as Issaquah makes the defensive stop there. Cross the field it goes, almost given up by Issaquah on a crossing pass. They're holding him well. That's and big. And the ball goes out of bounds. Yep. Out to Wenatchee Valley. Stiffening it up on the rides big there. Big turnover there. It's nice to get one back. Let's see if we can get a goal here. So Wenatchee Valley will be on offense here. Cole Loomis will bring it up towards the box as he's shadowed there by the defense. It's now in the attack zone for Wenatchee Valley. He'll feed outside to McCarthy. Cross it goes to Jorgensen. About time for him to come up with one. Roby with the shot and just barely dug out. Ball loose outside of the goal crease it out. on has got the ball. Jorgensen with it. Boy, that was a good attempt on the pass there. And now the shot taken ah. by Tilly off the mark. No good. And the uh, nice stop by the goalie that time again. Daniel Davis has been a busy oh. man back there. Yeah, yeah, especially lately. He's, he's up to the challenge, too. 7.05 to go here in regulation as Issaquah 
Brings it up the far sideline, and they're trying to push him out of bounds, and he did go out of bounds. The Wenatchee attack men are getting a little more aggressive on those rides, and it's paid off twice in a row. Keegan Gal Galbraith trying to bring the ball up the far sideline. Now we're going to get a timeout on the field. Maybe. I think it's timeout taken by Issaquah. Maybe they took the timeout before the oh, turnover there. Oh, so. could be. Okay. Could be. We'll see. We'll take it. 60-second break and come back. Tight one here. 6.56 to go in regulation. 8-7. It's Issaquah by one. Wenatchee Valley trying to push it. We'll come back after this. Welcome back here to the Apple Bowl. 8-7, our score is Saquon leading it by one with just under seven minutes to go in regulation. I keep saying that because, well, last time we Could were here, be. we had overtime. Mm -hmm. It will be Issaquah ball. We thought maybe they'd gone out of bounds, but I guess a timeout was called just before the player went out of bounds with ball. So it will be Eagle ball. Big, big uh, defense uh, possession here for Wenatchee. Kyle Weisler will flick it down to Sandberg, Sandbag. Sandbag cross over, and then they'll bring it back outside of that uh, perimeter to Hummony. Hummony with a couple of goals in this one. will feed it out to Weisler. Weisler hasn't uh, hit the scoring column since the first half. Now over to Ali Abadi. Ben Ali Abadi will feed it down behind the goal to Hummony. Hummony outside. Excuse me, that's Hummony that collects it now. And they'll back it away again, eat some more clock with six minutes to go. Now the attack by Weisler. He's free. Weisler, look out. Uh -oh. He's in close and with a shot and the goal. That's tough. He had his man beat, and he had an open look and took his time, and, and uh, you know, Kyle had no shot, no Not chance. Not much of a chance there for Kyle Robertson in goal for Wenatchee. And so with 6-12 to go here in regulation, it is a 9 Seven contest. And that was Weisler, huh? That was Kyle Weisler for the second time today for Issaquah. Reiner will do the faceoff against Gunter. Was 6-12 to go with Anti Valley. Down by two. But as we've seen, yeah, can score they quick. can score awfully quickly. Reiner will see if he can get the faceoff here. Ball loose on the Wenatchee side, on the offensive side. Still loose. Still and Reiner had a chance at it. Let's see who's going to pick it up. It Tax is Wenatchee Tucker. Valley. They Tucker. got knocked out. I don't know what they called there. Well, it's Wenatchee Valley ball. We're going to know. Called a timeout. Timeout <laughs> is what's called. So tit for tat. If one side can do it, so can the other. And it will be Wenatchee Valley ball when we come back after this 60-second timeout. 6.01 to go in the fourth. 9-7 Issaquah leading it. We'll be back after this on the NCW Life Channel. Thanks for watching NCW Life Channel today. I'm Eric Granstrom along with Rod Higley as we're bringing you lacrosse here live from the Apple Bowl with 6.01 to go, 9-7 Issaquah on top of the thunder. Our broadcast brought to you by Confluence Health, safe, high-quality care with compassion. Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert auto repair specialist. Leonard Evans Used Car Superstore, where the name means a great deal. And Walkabout Grill in Wenatchee and Leavenworth. Take a walk on the wild side. Well, it is Wenatchee ball, but you were watching uh, the uh, coaching staff for Issaquah. Are they going to try to deny this? Yeah, so they've got three guys on the ball over there. Uh, the, since they're starting in the defensive part of the field, they can put some extra men over there and try and challenge him before he can get off a pass here. Roby Jorgensen will have the ball to start it off here, facing the triple team and needs some help. Flicked it into the offensive zone. It's going to be touched by Wenatchee last, apparently, and goes out of bounds. You know, it worked. Coach did what they it did. did. Yeah. It did. They pestered him enough to lose the handle of the ball. And so now it is Issaquah turn on the offensive set with Holbrook. He'll bring it in with the long stick there and we'll pass it down. The ball loose. Losing an eye on it was Griffin Fish. Fish hit hard by McCarthy as he's not clear into the cheap seats. Well, I think there's about 50 pounds on those two guys. <laughs> Somebody now with it. Look ah. out and the shot high, but a nice block there by Robertson. Robertson will feed to Reiner. Reiner will bring it up towards midfield. 
Up the left side he goes. Reiner, yeah, they have numbers yeah, and had Kyle bodies. Oh, my goodness. Didn't see him. Schmaltz was wide open. Down in the corner goes to Coley. Coley back outside to McCarthy. McCarthy waits for some help here. Defense comes out on him. Here comes Nathan McCarthy on the drive. He will look for some help. Feedback behind the net. Boy, Boy that's a dangerous pass, yeah. and it's picked off there by Issaquah. That goalie is looking for that every time. Sam Foster picked it off for Issaquah, and so now it is the Eagles' ball. They'll flick it all the way across midfield and quickly into the offensive set here for Gage Gunter. Gunter, left side, it'll go to Sandbeg. Sandbeg back behind the goal to Fish with four and a half minutes time ticking with a two-goal deficit. Wenatchee Valley needs to make a stop and get another attack offensively. Outside it goes to Gunter, and you know Issaquah is going to try to burn as much clock as they can. Near side to Weisler. Weisler down low to Sandbeg as they will just continue to work it, work it, work it, wait for the defense to come out, and then maybe try to attack. 4-11 to go. It's keep away right now for Issaquah. At some point, you think Wenatchee's going to have to challenge one of these guys with a ball. Sandbeg, out top again, crosses over to Gunter. Gunter now on the attack of the drive. He'll feed. Oh. oh, right in front of the goal, and the ball was deflected, and let's see, it's out to Issaquah. Yeah, not sure if he hit pipe there or if Kyle knocked that one I out. I think it was hit by one of the sticks okay. for the Wenatchee Valley. Jared Hummity was on the shot there. And it will be Gunter with it now with 3.37 to go. Those sands in the hourglass are kind of running thin here for Wenatchee Valley as they trail it by 2.97. But what a game here today, win or lose for Wenatchee Valley against one of the toughest teams in the state. Right side to Sandbeg as the wind whips up here in the latter stages of this one. Now another opportunity in tight for Weisler. Weisler back outside, he'll back it away to Hummony. How many near side to fish as now rains start to fall here at the Apple Bowl as well. Fish spinning away from the defense with three minutes to go. Boy, they are burning that clock. Back behind to Ali Abadi. Ali Abadi pestered back there for the defense by Noah Kim. He'll pass it back outside and they'll work it clear out near the 40 yard line. With 2.43 to go. Boy, you got to extend that defense and try to get a turnover as it's Hummity with it. Boy, they're doing a great job killing this clock. They really are. Hummity, he'll flick it over on the pass to Fish. Fish again will go back behind the goal crease. Typical Issaquah spins away from the defense as Sam Yunker got in his face. Now he'll pass it back outside to Weisler. 2.15 to go. They've had this ball for... Two uh, minutes. About two minutes yeah. here on this set. Now shot. spinning away, Gunter with a wide open chance and the scoop shot, no good. It's going to go out of bounds and out to Issaquah. So under two minutes, they've got to keep it in that scoring box. So uh, that'll be a challenge here shortly. That'll help Wenatchee. So here comes Issaquah with it. With a minute 57 to go, the clock started again. Wenatchee Valley down by two as Issaquah has the possession here. Weisler with it. At the 25, will bounce pass over. The ball loose. Wenatchee Valley trying to scoop at it. And Sage the Crider. Thunder will come up with it. Big play by Sage there. Cutter Wilkins Take pass the ball, behind. Guys. The ball loose on the ground. And it's Issaquah coming up with a loose ball. My, oh, my. Opportunity golden for Wenatchee Valley in they transition push there. push that guy out of the box right now if they can. Say, come on, Sage. Spinning back behind the goal with a minute 21 to go is Thomas Sandbeg. Sandbeg, the ball, uh, the pass across, will go out of bounds and out to Wenatchee Valley. So they get a chance with a minute 13 to go, trailing it by two. Got to make it quickly and protect that ball. And we're going to get a timeout, I believe. No, we're going to get a substitution. What have we got stoppage for? Well, now they started again. No, let's see. He's reversing the call. He's saying... Who's... Evidently something yep, they get the near, ball back to sideline. Oh, my gosh. He said he stepped in and out of bounds. Uh, he, he, uh, <laughs> well, they, didn't, they weren't clear about yeah. whether they were blowing it in yet. One official blowing in the play, the other official stoppage here at midfield, yeah. and so it's Issaquah ball. Unfortunate confusion there for Wenatchee Valley. 
And Issaquah back on the offensive attack here with a minute to go. Pass across, picked up by Gunter. Gunter defended out there by Sage Kreider. It almost pushed him out of the box. This is a good, disciplined Issaquah team, I'll tell you. Gunter feeds across to Hummony. 47 seconds left. There it is. Oh. Hummony almost knocked out of the box. Get him outside that blue line, then it's a turnover. Hummony spinning away from uh, Jax Tucker back there. Running out of time. 32 seconds left, down by two. Need about a miracle right now for Wenatchee Valley. Back behind the net is Weisler. Weisler picked up back there defensively for Wenatchee Valley by Jack Myers. 16 seconds left. I don't think they'll uh, take, even take a shot here yeah. in these last 10 seconds. Maybe I'm wrong. Gunter with it on the attack. Comes near side, the ball loose on the ground again, but Wenatchee Valley couldn't come up with it right away. Now they finally do with time winding down. Unfortunately, they just ran out of time in this one. Did Wenatchee Valley, but give credit to the Thunder for a heck of a challenge here today of Issaquah. But in the end, they fall by a score of 9-7. to seven. We'll take a break and come back and wrap this one up for you from the Apple Bowl as we had rain and wind and now the sun coming back out. We'll take a two-minute break and come back. Actually, a four-minute break. Four-minute timeout. 9-7 the final. Issaquah wins it over Wenatchee Valley. We're coming back from the Apple Bowl on the NCW Life Channel. Thanks for watching Wenatchee Valley Lacrosse on the NCW Life Channel. Today's broadcast has been presented by Walkabout Grill, Global Car Care, Wenatchee's friendly expert audio repair specialist, Leonard Evans Used Cars Superstore. Your source for high school sports throughout the year is the NCW Life Channel.